Gadget Show Live at Christmas is heading to Earl's Court in London from the 1st to the 3rd of November and tickets are on sale now. What's up guys, Nepenthes here and the Gadget Show indeed is live from the 1st to the 3rd of November. But that is not all. This year myself, Matt HD Gamer, Road to Shore, Calyx, Tobias Gaming and Calfreezy will also be there with myself, Matt and Harry going on the 1st of November. If you'd like to join us to play Next Gen FIFA against us or to ask us questions in a dedicated Q&A, then buy your tickets below in the description using my discount code to get 10% off. Now before we get into the video, in the last episode you guys smashed the like button getting almost 7,000 which is absolutely unreal. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it and if we could get over 5,000 today before 10pm then I'll upload a bonus episode for you guys. I've gone for a little less likes and a little more time this time because today's video is uploaded a little bit later and lastly here is the question of the day. If you came to the Gadget Show live, what would you ask me? Leave your answers below and let's get into the video first of all guys welcome back to the uh, the FIFA 14 let's play it's been a few days without let's play and uh, the way this is going to work for the the ongoing future at least is that Monday to Friday we're going to have FIFA 14 let's play and every day that you hit 6,000 likes we'll have a bonus episode up and on the weekends we're going to be having different series so if you do enjoy this more than anything else then check back every Monday to Friday because it's going to be on more of a schedule so the first game we come up against a guy with a pretty decent team guys he's got a very strong uh, hybrid team actually and um, Kagawa there doing work for him he's got Negredo in the team as well you briefly got to see the team at the start and uh, this guy not only did he have a, uh, a good team he's also a, a pretty damn decent player you know I struggled in the match I'm not going to lie it was one of those games where my team just isn't cut up to his standard and even if I did have a strong team he's still a strong player anyway so who knows how this game would have gone but hopefully you guys are enjoying this series if you are you know like I say a like is much appreciated the, the response this series gets at the moment is crazy and I can't tell you guys how difficult it is to come up with um, something different for each intro uh, to the point where it's it's a struggle it's a genuine struggle but this guy here scores another goal there with Daniel Sturridge and I get a lot of people tweeting me um, that they're struggling with this game and I want to talk a little bit about that through this episode as you know this this whole series is about how to build the ultimate team without using the the use of buying FIFA coins without buying FIFA points and pretty much without trading on a whole level like I will be doing some trading because I can't not like sometimes if I've got four or five K coins sitting there I want to turn that into eight to ten K coins just through you know done through about eight you know maybe like an hour's trading or whatever um, Look at this, by the way, guys. This this game was 4-2 in the 88th minute, and it ends up uh, it's five. I think that makes it 5-3. Uh, so we go from 4-2 to 5-3 and then boom 6-3 with a fantastic strike there from the Grado. So the guy wins 6-3 with three goals in the 90th minute and one in the 88th. Um, but in terms of building the ultimate team, I have a, a few friends, like real life friends that are struggling and, and come to me for help. And a, a lot of you guys on Twitter and YouTube that are struggling and come to me for help. Now, I'm, I'm not the best FIFA 14 player there is, but I have played a lot of games on FIFA 14 already, closing on to, in on 200. And um, my record on my other account which isn't this account I mean this one's pretty decent anyway 17 1 and 4 but my record on my other account is 90 wins 10 draws and 22 losses um, now with a few disconnects in there as well that's an awesome uh, record and for the most part I've used the exact same team every game because I found a team that I love and I want to look, kind of let you guys know as to what I feel like you should buy to help yourselves now I play a 4-4-2 in this uh, in this series. I'm going to be playing a 4-1-2-1-2 in my main on my main account, and I'm eventually going to change to a 4-1-2-1-2 on this series. Um, and the reason why 4-1-2-1-2 for me is the strongest is because the wingers are effective in a shooting capacity, and the cam, believe it or not, is my highest assister. Um, he has the most assists for me. I have Gundogan as my cam. He has something like 45 assist, assists in 35 games with 10 goals, um, and then my strikers are also very strong. Now, what you want to look for, and we're going to go in, we're going to talk about the attacking section of the team this episode and maybe the defensive section in the next episode. But what you want in an attacking sense is you need a target man. That's a given. You need someone with really strong heading and really good strength and good finishing. Now, for that, I have Lewandowski. He's got, I do believe, 82 strength, um, 82 heading. I can't remember his exact stats, but he's strong, he's fast, he's got good heading and good finishing. Now, another important thing for your strikers is you want to have a good weak foot, a minimum of a four-star weak foot. If you can get someone with five-star, then get them too. And the reason for this is because 
when playing FIFA 14, everybody abuses the the flaws in the game. Now, there is a patch coming out on Wednesday, but for the most part, of all the people I come up against, they abuse crosses, they abuse one-two chip through balls, they abuse the long finesse shots. So I'm going to do exactly the same, and I want you guys to also do exactly the same if you're more interested in winning than having fun. Um, well, I believe winning is having fun, but if you're more interested in winning games than trying to do skill moves and getting dicked on, um, then you know th this is uh, this would be good for you. In terms of wingers... Um, you're going to want people who have got okay pace, like electric pace isn't that important, like if you can get someone with crazy good pace then that's all, all the better, but you want someone with good pace, not great pace but good pace, good passing attributes and good shooting attributes. Now the way I have it, I have Hazard on the left and uh, Robin on the right as we come up against a 4-2-3-1 team here and he's got a really really good team. Um, but I don't believe one striker is effective in FIFA 14. But um, on the on the left, I've got Hazard. He's got good pace, good shooting, good uh, good passing. And on the right, I've got Robben, who also has those attributes. Now, the reason why I have these players there is because I like to cut in with my wingers. Um, so Robben's left-footed, Hazard is right-footed. Because the finesse shots from these guys are ridiculously good. Like, if you get anywhere within sort of like 25 to 45 yards... I'm, I'm going to try a finesse shot with these players because they've got that incredible shooting ability. If the attack works out so that you can't come in for a finesse shot, you can go down the wing and you can cross the ball in instead. Now, because these guys have good passing, you're going to be able to cross well. And because you've got players like Lewandowski up front, he's going to be able to get on the end of these crosses and win the headers. Um, with the other striker, I've got Aubameyang. Now, Aubameyang was initially bought for me as a as a chem booster for Lewandowski, but he is by far the best player I have ever played with in any FIFA game. I'm not even kidding. He's so good. Last year for me, Robben was this player. And it took me like eight months to figure out that Robben was my favorite player in FIFA 13. In FIFA 14, I'm telling you, Aubameyang is crazy good. I put the chemistry style on him that gives him shooting and heading because they're the two stats that he lacks. You notice that he's absolutely stacked up in pace. So you don't even need to improve that. And if you do get to reduce that a little bit by adding chem styles elsewhere, then that's not a problem. The amount of goals Obama Yang scores for me from headers, from crosses, from corners are crazy. But not only that, because he gets in good positions, I guess his positioning is exceptional. Uh, he drops into positions just on the top of the box. And the amount of finesse shots I score with him, considering he doesn't have the finesse shot trait, is unreal. On top of that, if you do break through the defense, because he has got a high pace, he's going to be go you know, going through and no one's going to catch him. Like It doesn't happen often in FIFA 14 where you get a one two chip through ball and the striker is just through on goal but when that does happen you're through on goal and then it's up to you to finish the chance off so in terms of an attacking composition for your team guys I would recommend if you're struggling if you're not struggling with the game then carry on doing what you're doing this is just obviously my opinions but if you're struggling build a 4-1-2-1-2 team get two strikers one with really good heading really good shooting and uh, the pace is largely irrelevant but you want you know at least kind of 70 just so that they can keep up with the defense and the play the other striker go for someone really really quick just for the to kind of counterbalance the fact that you've got a target man you want also like a, a speedster striker for your wingers go with players who have got really good passing and really good shooting and then for your centre attacking midfielder, you want someone with really good dribbling and really good passing. The shooting's not too important, but the you know good dribbling, good passing, so you can dribble through the the midfield and defensive line and set up your strikers. Now this guy that I came up against in the last game of this episode, guys, he's got a really really good team. Like the the team he uses, maybe he's got a lot of non rares, but the players are very good. But not you know aside from this guy having a really good team, he's actually a really really good player. Like I struggled a lot to play against this guy. I do pull the game back in the 88th minute there with Aruna Kone and I thought that was that. You know, we went 2-0 down, pull it back to 2-2. But yet again, 90th minute cheese goals all over the shop and this guy crosses the ball in there. Eder with the header and uh, the keeper couldn't save it. Contiro with the goal to make it 3-2 in the 90th. And as you know, FIFA guys, we have time for another 90th minute goal. This guy, he just pumps the ball up the field. Rodrigo just runs past Gary Cahill, who is caught watching the stars instead of looking for the ball. And Rodrigo smashes it home to make it 4-2.
that is the end of the game and with that the end of the episode hopefully this has helped you gonna build a build a better team we're gonna be building towards that sort of team in this series as well so we can actually talk about it a lot more as we go forwards as I show you what who I buy and why I buy them um, hopefully it will kind of make a little bit more sense to you guys what I'm talking about but for this episode uh, because I'm getting so many people ask me how they can build a better team that for me is uh, is my advice especially in attacking areas guys but this is the end of the video if you have enjoyed this be sure to leave a like rating comment and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. As always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Peace!